You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, on the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for Terra Nova. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest Terra Nova news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for Terra Nova. Welcome, welcome, guys. How are you this evening? I would like to thank Kendra Cavasell and Gabrielle Loren for joining me in what is uh, the season one last podcast that we are doing. The finale. The finale. I know, very exciting. Kristen and thank Conjoy's. God. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> totally kidding. <laughs> I mean... By the way, I you know what we, we how giddy were you guys? You guys weren't that giddy since the first no. episode that we watched together. I agree. This was the best one ever. And Kristen said it best, or uh, not Kristen. Uh, <laughs> oh. Gabrielle said it really? best. Really? Wow, we're in the season finale, and Phil doesn't know my name. Good job. <laughs> It just happens every now and then. Well, actually, I think the pilot and the finale were the best out of the whole season. I think every other episode was a bunch of rant, rant. Filler. <laughs> Filler? Yeah, it was just not good for me. Well, I didn't yeah. like it. Well, it built up to some crazy stuff, which was really, really exciting. Um, let's talk about 2149. You you were, I mean, uh, that's what it seemed like for you, Gabby. You were very excited to see 2149 back in action. Yeah, because it makes things a little more interesting. We saw it in the pilot. But it's a hellhole. Yeah, but, it, <laughs> but th that's who they're, they're interacting with, and that's their whole motive the entire time is getting these shipments to 2149. So it plays a major role in the show, but they never showed us clips going back to what was going on in 2149. So it leaves you to wonder... And you want to see it. It's interesting. You want to know what's going on on their side and who they're dealing with and where who Mira's daughter is and where she is. And so when those clips come up, I like it. I don't know. I agree. Uh, speaking of not not Mira's daughter, but uh, Josh's love interest, Kara. She yes, Kara. Oh my God. Rest in peace. Yes. Oh my God. It, by the way, the perfect setup in many ways. You know what I mean? Because they, they lured Shannon to obviously lower his guard, which made everyone else lower their guard. Yeah. And then, boom, the explosion, Literally. and Kara is dead. But you know what's funny? Like, why did Kara have to die and Jim Shannon was right next to her and he survived? And I know you have some sexism thing going on that you were thinking, like, oh, well, the man always survives, right? Is that what you said? I was, it was a joke. As okay. We're watching the Phil thing. just yeah. wants. Phil just wants to be loyal to his fans. He doesn't want anyone to get offended. But you know, you were saying that the man always survives. Well, it, here's the interesting <laughs> part. It could have. Here, here's where it definitely could have gone, but they chose not to go that route because it would have been taking it obviously very differently. Where um, Josh could have gotten mad at the father even more so because he was supposed to uh, protect. Yeah, and he's the one who denied Josh that access. But you could see in his face he felt bad, um, Mr. Shannon. When Jim? he was hugging, yeah, when he was hugging Josh, you could see he kind of felt a little guilty. But you know what? What if, like, what if, oh, where was I going with this? <laughs> what if, oh, what if Kara <laughs> survived? Sorry, what if Kara survived and she was in a coma or something? And so for, like, the whole, like, halfway through the next season, she was just in a coma. And then she woke up one day and she had all this stuff to say about 2149, like, things she knew and info she had. That would have made it interesting, right? The writers should have thought about that. What do you guys think? I think There's... I think Josh and Sky just, there you go, wrap it up. Get no, married. No, but Mr. they could have still gotten married. She would have been in a coma and they could make their relationship stronger. But I think if Kara came with information, you know what I mean, like, woke up all of a sudden and was like, I have all of this information and like filled everyone in. That sorry, would have been interesting. Sorry to burst your bubble, and I hope Kendra backs me up on this. Uh, Kara was just a pawn. She was, but I'm saying, what if she had survived? 
But you they, know what I mean? Wouldn't that have made things interesting if she was just in a coma and she survived? I get, they have other people to talk about. Again, very... Uh, but, no, but now the portal's closed, so nobody else is coming through. But then Shannon had a glimpse of 2149 also, so maybe he had... Yeah, but, inside. like, he doesn't have really any inside besides what he saw, and now it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, it would have just been cool if they went more in-depth with the writing and kind of, like, made Fair it... And put another character in there to make it more dynamic. Fair enough. Well, you know what I mean? why don't we... Kendra, uh, I said my what-if scenario. Gabby said her what-if scenario. What was your what-if scenario of this episode? <laughs> I didn't really have a what-if scenario. I was just enjoying each moment. I appreciated this uh, this episode more than any other. Fair enough. Um, the the plot um, of 2149 uh, to steal, or not steal, pillage in every sense of the word, um, the ore of Terra Nova. Um, what did you guys think of that? Well, I think they're very money driven. Clearly, <laughs> you know, it's kind of sad. Like everything's about money because even uh, Lucas had mentioned to Josh Shannon mm -hmm. in the bar right before they got into the fight. He said, "Go buy yourself a new friend," and gave him a Terra, a Terra, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that was so obnoxious. I was like, he must like just throw money around. I wonder where he gets his money from. Or, his like, employers. Yeah, but like, what it is? This is what it is. It's the mafia. It is the mafia of twenty one forty nine. They're a mob. Yeah. And they're all about money, money, money. That's what he is. He's in the mob. And again, what, what what's interesting is, uh, you know, you can only take and take and take for so long. But obviously, introducing the idea of time travel just opens up a whole new scam if you will. Um, and so that way you are able to just take and pillage and all that. Um, and I know it's kind of like an idealistic thing, uh, which, you know, in the end, that's what the season was about, a whole new beginning, um, which uh, I'm going to call them the 2149ers did not want. They, they just rather just take, 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 and then uh, keep uh, their uh, Nazi-esque 2149 and keep the rest of the people oppressed while they go from rich to, I forget the word, um, the guy said, but I don't remember. But he said basically they're gonna go from rich to unimaginable or whatever, something like that. Yeah. Um, but it's like, what can you do with that, anyways, in a world that they're living in? Like they live in like a disgusting world. What I mean, what can they do with their money at that point? It's like didn't look appealing to me. Yeah. No. Like go spend the money in another, like make a portal and go somewhere else because <laughs> go to 2011 or something and bring it to our economy. How about that? <laughs> what do you guys think about that? <laughs> I think that might be nice. They can barter <laughs> some more interesting products. They could. They could. Or go back to the 90s. I would go back to the 90s. By Come the on, way. like TLC, <laughs> Destiny's Child. What up? Uh, <laughs> <he's> shaking his <laughs> head. Jesse's <laughs> loving like, That's where I would go back to if I was living in 2149. Like, what was a good time period? I'd say the 90s. Or maybe the 80s. The golden age. But we don't know what 2149 is like yet. We do. Did you not see their well, whole like surroundings? It's like dead land. I mean, our 2149. But, uh, by the way, I hated... Oh, the, yeah, but I'm talking about in the show. <laughs> I hated the employer. I hate when people always get like that, uh, where you know he was just complaining about all the bugs and things like that. You know, you're, you're coming into um, the, the Jurassic or Cretaceous period, whatever the hell it is. You know it's going to be bad. What'd you expect? Well, he's a brat. He's a rich little brat. That's what mm -hmm. he is. Oh my god, I get an infection. <laughs> me. But that's, that's what he was like. But for me, that's the <laughs> irony because you come from a shithole anyway. You know? Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's why it's so confusing to me. You know what I mean? Because even the rich guys, you don't even see if they're living good because everything looks like shit over there. And again, that's that like that's the irony of of the greed that they have in yeah. twenty one forty nine is the fact that rather than here's here's an amazing beautiful place that you could just escape to, you're just deciding to steal from there and sort of patch up your hellhole. Yeah, but that's not really I don't know. They're like pirates. Very dumb move in my opinion, but they're like pirates. Um. But anyways, in talking about the twenty one forty nine people. I'm I'm just wondering what you guys think the loyalty is between the Sixers and the 2149ers because I get Mira's loyalty. They have her child and she wants a better life for her and her child. Mm -hmm. So what are the other Sixers doing? Like why are they working? Like what is their motivation? 
What they, are they getting out of it? I think th uh, there's a fear factor there. With Mira or, or the 2149 people? Well, uh, the Sixers. You know, like Mira, they're, you know, she, she's worried that her she wants a better life for her daughter. The rest of the Sixers, I believe, are under the impression, all right, um, we're working for these guys. We know what they're about. They're going to destroy this place one way or another. Um, might as well join them so I don't get destroyed. And they may each have their own stories like Mira. They may have mm. daughters, sons, yeah, other interests. But at the same time, it, going to Phil's point, why wouldn't they just go with Taylor then if they just know if they're giving up so that's why they're working with 2149ers why wouldn't they side with Taylor they know how strong their colony is why wouldn't they work with them yeah but they I think the point is that deep down they believe that uh Commander Taylor's not strong enough to overtake 2149 really? that's interesting um and I think uh you know from what it seems after seeing Mira and, and especially Lucas the Sixers are damaged people like uh, like you said they I'm sure they have their own Mira problems mm. you know with whatever that it may be so they're kind of sheep yeah hmm. they're the uh they need the Sixers need a lot, a lot of uh, therapy well like sessions. Sky's for Sky's mom for example like why was she I mean, was she forced? Was she voluntary? Like, why is she a sixer? She was a pawn. Yeah, she was a pawn. She didn't know. She didn't yeah. know the situation. Sky had to... She was the sixer. Yeah. It, it's pretty much a cult, and they just manipulate you into joining, and you think it's a good thing, but it's not. Exactly. That's probably Here, what it is. Have some more. Cheers. Become a sixer. No. <laughs> never. I would join Taylor. I like Taylor. He's awesome. I do. I do. Um... <laughs> Let's see. Where was I going with this? Um, <laughs> you love the Shannons. Next topic. No, well, you know what? Uh, <laughs> before we get to the Shannons, I know uh, I know that's on our list to talk about, but let's let's talk about kind of Commander Taylor, uh, if, if we will, impromptu. Because uh, I know you've hated him well, the whole no, season. You've was, watched him. I didn't hate him, but I was going to say now's an appropriate time to say I don't, you know, I don't suspect him anymore mm -hmm. until the next season, if there is one. Um, but, yeah, he's proven to me in the season finale that he's a good good guy and i think um what i like about it is that they had it by design you know what i mean all, all these people like sky commander taylor and things like that we didn't know their true colors um and then eventually it came out through the their actions that they took mm -hmm. you know your thoughts on Commander Taylor? You like Commander Taylor. I do like Commander Taylor, and I liked him especially more in this episode mm -hmm. because you see a softer side of him. And it's funny because no matter how stupid his son is and all the things he would do to him and how his son would probably just kill him in a second, Commander Taylor is this, like, soft spot for his son because I guess it's always going to be his son. And so he, like, pretty much got stabbed because he had that soft spot in him mm -hmm. where he for a second thought that his son was being... Um, genuine. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it was kind of funny because Phil actually believed it. Phil fell for it too. No, he, he, here's what I will say. Um, <laughs> because la last episode I predicted it would be uh, um, Lucas would kind of realize the evil of his ways and he would uh, amend because of that. And so I was trying to force that prediction to come true. So I really wanted Lucas to be genuine in that moment. Mm -hmm. But obviously it didn't happen. See, I was thinking that eventually in upcoming seasons maybe or episodes that they will form another bond and he the son is lucas is going to go back to taylor because maybe the people he's working with have ulterior motives against him mm -hmm. or they like he gets caught in something he didn't realize what it was yeah. or maybe because he can't give them what they want they turn against him so i could see him being left with nothing and then crawling back to his father for like forgiveness in seriousness though i can't wait to talk about that in predictions um yes. by the way speaking of commander taylor how smart is that guy to carve out into bullets his coordinates that's pretty smart You're talking about taylor yeah, yeah. oh sorry. remember that's how they that's how they discovered him because uh jim's wife um you know she was in the infirmary and she's like oh this is interesting mm -hmm. um and well i would say it's even smarter of them to figure out that those were coordinates <laughs> On the bolts. <laughs> I would say to carve out something into a bullet, something that's metal, when you're in the damn woods. Pretty impressive. Uh, and put it on every bullet hit. Like, imagine, you know what I mean? Like, you're yeah. shooting, shooting, shooting. Like, I mean, unless you, like, literally know that this is the last bullet you got, 
you know? That's a lot of Chances are, carving yeah. that you have to do. Yeah. And the coordinates were the same in each person? Is that what it was? Yeah. Just so he made sure somebody found one of them? Yep. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Sorry. It's an interesting He's way like, about going yep, about it. Much. What's that? No, and he probably knew Dr. Shannon would find them. Yes. She's a smart one. Yeah, well, he, he probably knew Dr. Shannon would find them because she's obviously involved the with main, all the patients. Right. Yeah. It didn't, and, uh, you know, a very heavy risk because, you know, Lucas could find out somehow. Oh, yeah, because if he saw the bullet or... But Lucas so, is kind of like, I don't know. I think the, the problem with Lucas, um, just in general, was that he's blinded by his hate, so he couldn't... He, yeah. he has a problem with seeing what's right in front of him. Mm -hmm. You're right. He's kind of... Like, that is a very good observation. Psychopath. But uh, speaking of Jim's wife in the infirmary, um, the, the, you know, uh, it's been said many times that this show is really about the Shannons, and uh, obviously that was tonight's episode, or two episodes, whatever you want to call it, is the epitome of the Shannons coming together and bonding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is that what we're going to do? We're just going <laughs> to... It's almost kind of <laughs> bothering me that it's always about the Shannons. Well, who would... I mean, other people were involved, certainly, but, you know... I like, I like more than one storyline, and I feel like just... Since it's always about the Shannons, it's kind of, like, annoying. But I like how everyone had a role in this, mm -hmm. you know, even even Zoe uh, had some sort of role where she gives Commander Taylor a hug, and that's what he really needed at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, I mean, that was nice, but it's just... Now that you bring it up, now I'm kind of, like, thinking about it, and it's true. Like, every episode revolves around them, and it's annoying. Yeah, but... but <laughs> no, but it it's... It, it's it, new. But they're dealing with the exterior problems. Yeah, because they represent. Yeah, they can't necessarily represent all fam. You know, other show families, all families have problems too. Let's no, but talk about everybody else in Terra Nova. The Shannons what? represent. So I, I like know. the Shannons. I mean, I you really don't like the Shannons. It's not they don't like them. It's like it's gonna get boring after a while. That every storyline no, revolves I'm around not, them. I'm not saying I'm not saying it wouldn't, but in this season, did it get boring in that in that regard? Well, I was getting bored with the episodes. I think, I like I said, the pilot and the season finale were the best. I think they do better with longer episodes because right. they have more details, more things going on. It's more exciting. The short little one-hour episodes, they don't really accomplish too much. You know? Fair enough. They but, don't um, get that far. You know, uh, what, what made it I, as I've said, uh, for me at least, you know, uh, the episodes just kept getting faster and faster and better and better as the uh, the season progressed because a lot of the stuff that was kind of slow moving in the beginning and the, and the seeds they planted, it all came together. I mean, the wheelchair guy, right? He served his purpose tonight mm -hmm. in uh, distracting no, everyone and so that Jim Jim Shannon could get in the... Um, in the truck. Yeah, exactly. There were a lot yeah. of clever distractions today. Yes. Yes, well, that just were. means that uh, Taylor's crew is obviously surpassing Mira and the Sixers' expectations of them because they are smart and doing what they need to do to get what they want. Exactly. So they are smarter than Mira thinks. And sometimes let's talk about Josh because uh, you know we we don't we we've talked about Josh a little bit, uh, but mainly on his teen angst thing. But I like how he sort of comes into his own and sort of becomes a man. Uh, for me, the epitome of of who he really is is uh, when he looks to his father and says, you know, I, I hated you for what you did back in uh, 2149, but now I realize sometimes you can't help yourself and you have to do what you have to do. You guys no thoughts on that? <laughs> Kendra? I mean... I mean, that was a big, big moment, you know? Because, again, I think he it was either that or he could have gone Lucas's route. Yeah. But I think he saw a kind of a, an open place to kind of prove himself to his dad and become that man. And instead of kind of shunning him, he he wanted to join his team and and become recognized for you know mm -hmm. becoming the man. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was nice, it was nice to see that growth in him. Do you think he realized his love for Sky in that moment too? I don't know. I think it's rebound love. I think. <laughs> Because he was still thinking of Kara. He he didn't mourn her enough yet. Not yet, but uh, I mean, this is going to be horrible to say, but I think he might have realized that, uh, you know what? Maybe Sky was the one for me all along. And it took the death of Kara to figure that out. 
I think he was crushing on both of them, and I don't. I think yeah, he's still mourning her, but there's so many other bigger problems going on in the colony that it's like he can't even really mourn her because there's so many like they're in a war zone. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he's transferring any feelings he has for Kara onto Sky. That's my I think diagnosis. That's developing. <laughs> I mean, I think there's definitely something going on, but love is blind. You know, mm -hmm. he doesn't even realize how much he cares about Sky. You know. <laughs> Well, we know until one episode. <laughs> Maddie certainly. Uh, oh yeah. Her love for Mark has <laughs> developed quite heavily. That was serious. By the way, I, I forget forget which one of you said it, but uh, who who it was asked? Me. What was it? Uh, <laughs> the dinosaur. Oh wait. <laughs> no no. <laughs> um, it was it was the fact that uh, when Mark and Maddie kiss each other, um, someone said, "Oh, I bet uh, Mark didn't get permission from Mr. Oh, Shannon to do that." <laughs> To, to even say I love you, I think it was. Cause he, they, yeah. He said, yeah, they exchanged I love yous, and I said, I don't know if he asked uh, Mr. Shannon if he can love her. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I, I want to get your guys' take on why that was in there. I think for me, it was the fact that uh, as we sort of prepared for this war that, um, that was sort of building, they need to draw the stakes, you know, so that way, as we see with Carr and Josh, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to lose. And uh, by having them say, I love you, it really um, solidified that um, there's a lot at stake for everyone. Mm -hmm. Did you feel it was a little too soon? Um, I mean, it, it made, s I felt it was a little bit too soon, but I could see why from their perspective, um, they had to say it because, you know, it could have been the last time they saw each other. And so even if they didn't, they, they definitely liked each other, mm -hmm. but I think love is something you have to develop over time. Um, but again, uh, uh, because they had so little time together and they knew this could be it, they, they just had to rush they to say it because the... they knew they were going to love each other anyway. Does <laughs> that gonna, make sense? I'm going to speak out on this topic. You say love takes time, which I agree with most of the time, but there are people that fall in love after two weeks. It's rare, but it happens. Um, it, I mean, Jesse, have we found a girl for Adam Sudman? Uh -oh. that's, a, that's an inside joke for you <gasps> listeners out there. Oh my but, God, where are you going with that? But but I'm Gabrielle Loren is in love with Adam Sudman, who you can check out later what? on tonight on Fear Factor. No, I think he's in After love with me. Huh? You guys are such. <laughs> <laughs> love okay. has developed. Okay. After buzz. After buzz. I don't even know about this. <laughs> I didn't. This is not true. They make it up because he's in love with me. Spoiler alert! I know. I know. <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> Spoiler All right. alert. That's funny. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Harold, right. so what has Adam told you? Well, we could talk about this more off air. I, I'm sh I, sh I certainly know uh, our Terra Nova fans. They have no idea what we're talking about. Oh, my God. That is but uh, check out photos on Facebook.com slash AfterBuzzTV of both Gabby and Adam. And then what? eventually you'll see the blossoming love. What are you talking wow. about? Fill us on And like, speaking something. of which, just spread the word of AfterBuzz. You know what I mean? So much is going on. You see drama in real life of Terra Nova. And guess what? Somehow... The reason why we feel so connected to Terra Nova is because it translates into real life. You want to spread the word of AfterBuzz? You want to see AfterBuzz? <gasps> oh my goodness. Share it with everyone. I think this was my last Terra Nova episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving the show. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't help yourself, as Josh has told us. Okay. All right. I'm sure. Um, How did it go there? Let's talk about, let's talk about <laughs> Jim's wife and how yes. awesome she was this episode. Yes. She's a good um, tag team. I'll let you guys talk about her because, you know, uh, you guys called me sexist and all that. So I'll I, let you I speak you about why. <laughs> he I called mean, himself sexist. I, I probably did. <laughs> but I certainly loved uh, what what um, Mrs. Shannon did. She was amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah, and she Wait, what are you Sorry, laughing about? Sorry, did you hear her? <laughs> she was I can't even do it. No, because her tag, like. She uh, was amazing. No, I, I loved her tactics in it. this. Yeah, I know. He, that was passion. <laughs> that was but passion. I don't know. That was good. How smart was it to say, you know, <laughs> there's one cure and, and two of them are poison? Right. And and none of that was true. And none of that was true. Yeah. But even even if it was, it's such a smart tactic because mm -hmm. let's mentally, if if you steal one and, and you inject yourself with it, you're like, okay, wait, was that the poison or not? Right. Um, so you. Y it's so just, you're depending on her, so you're gonna do what she says, and she didn't compromise her, you know, her medical vow. Exactly. By, you know, 
by doing that, she just yeah. sedated him. I just love the part when he ran up to her and was like, give it to me, give it to me. And like, it was a sedative. I just thought that was like the funniest thing ever. Because he was asking for it and it was harmless. Yeah. Like, give it yeah, to me now. No, Please give it to me. There was no virus or anything. Yeah, I just thought See, it was so funny. And again, <laughs> if he just wasn't such a hypochondriac, it would have he would have been fine. Yeah, she's right. hysterical. That was a good she moment. Good. Um, let's see. <laughs> Where are we? Well, uh, I know we uh, we di we didn't really put this as a topic, but let's talk about the war strategy. Because uh, in, in many ways, you know, um, you got or at least you, as you have told <laughs> us now, don't like the Shans as much. And what made this episode exciting for me, and I'm sure for you, um, is the fact that a lot of else was introduced and for me it was the war strategy what is the war strategy yeah, on that? Go ahead. Uh, the war strategy well as we as we call it <laughs> i know it, you wrote down like a map over there what is it i wrote down <laughs> chulai chum oh, tell okay. him chulai chum um is what uh, uh, washington said that right yes yeah. don't quote me on chulai chum but that's what i heard it was chum -a chum -a chum <laughs> but we're used to the mumbles on this show so yes we'll let that one slide um uh, by the way, very noble of her to sacrifice herself in order to uh, get that message across. Um, and as we come to obviously realize, Chulai Chum is, um, you the know. The bridge, right? The bridge. Destroy the bridge. Which, uh, smart. Uh, here's my question. We, at least I predicted, like, they're going to have to destroy this um, portal. Um why were they hesitant to do it sooner? Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about war strategy. Because maybe, I don't know, maybe they didn't see it as too much of a threat. And it was still people pilgrimage. Like, there were pilgrimages coming through. And yeah. they want more people to come yeah. to Terra Nova. I think mm -hmm. they would have, yeah, let it happen if it you know there was no bad intention yeah like they're not it. just gonna destroy something for no reason yeah. right yeah All right. so save it as a last ditch effort yeah yeah it's like the last alternative because yet again they need their medical supplies and technology but they made the sacrifice to give that up mm -hmm. to be safe and to make sure those other people you know what this are. is the perfect segue jesse are you ready to bring in dr strange love oh yeah all right, for those of you who don't know, Dr. Strangelove is a movie from um, 1964. It's awesome. And the, the, the whole blowing up and, uh, you know, uh, cutting yourself off from the rest of the world and, uh, you know, keeping a thousand people just remind me of this so much. Um, not that it was a hysterical moment. It was very serious in the episode. But my demented mind just goes to hilarious places, and I'm, I thought of Dr. Strangelove. So for everyone out there, please enjoy this awesome clip. the bottom of uh, some of our deeper minds, sir. Yeah? Radioactivity would never penetrate a mine some thousands of feet deep. And in a matter of weeks, sufficient improvements in dwelling space could easily be provided. How long would you have to stay down there? Well, let's see now. Uh, cobalt saw EMG. Uh, Dr. Strangelove is going to propose a plan to save the world. This is the end of the movie, by the way. Spoiler alert. You mean people could actually stay down there for a hundred years? It would not be difficult, my pure. Nuclear reactors could... I'm sorry, Mr. President. Nuclear reactors could provide power... Can't believe they're taking advice from this guy. Greenhouses could maintain plant life. Animals could be oh. raped and slaughtered. <laughs> Quick survey would have to be made of all the available mine sites in the country. But I would guess that a uh, dwelling space for several hundred thousands of our people could easily be provided. Well, I, I would hate to have to decide who stays up and who goes down. Well, that uh, would not be necessary, Mr. President. Could easily be accomplished with a computer. And the computer could be set and programmed to accept factors from youth, health, sexual fertility, intelligence, and a cross-section of necessary skills. 
possibly absolutely vital that our top government and military men be included to foster and impart the required principles of leadership and tradition. Wow. For, for those of you Is that listening, like Hitler? yeah, he's trying to uh, he's trying to avenge Hitler. For those of you listening, he just put his arm up in the Heil Hitler way. With the proper breeding techniques and the ratio of, say, 10 females to each male. Oh my <laughs> god. They then work their way back to the present gross national product within, say, 20 years. But look here, Doctor, wouldn't this nucleus of survivors be so grief stricken and anguished that they'd, well, envy the dead and not want to go on living? No, sir. Also, when, when they go down into the mine, Abraham will still be alive. There will be no shocking memories. And the prevailing motion will be one of nostalgia for those left behind. Combined with a spirit of bold curiosity for the adventure ahead. <laughs> For those of you listening, he's given the Heil Hitler because he can't help himself. Now he's choking himself. <laughs> this guy has some serious problems. Doctor, you mentioned the uh, ratio of uh, ten women to each man. Uh, uh, wouldn't that necessitate the abandonment of the so-called uh, monogamous sexual relationship? I mean... As far as men were concerned. Uh, regrettably, yes. But it is, you know, a sacrifice required for the future of the human race. <laughs> of I course. To add that since each man will be required to do prodigious service along these lines, the women will have to be selected for their sexual characteristics, which will have to be of a highly <laughs> stimulating nature. I must confess, you have an astonishingly good idea there, Doctor. Thank you, sir. All right, Jess, you can pause it. A creeper in the back likes it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and basically, he, he goes on, and uh, he he can't help himself. He he, he rises up in full Heil Hitler. Um, but but the reason I wanted to bring in this clip. Uh, yes, I was going to ask you. Well, <laughs> uh, this is the more. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is sa uh, This movie is very much a satire <laughs> on sort of uh you know um you know, um, sort of apocalyptic, uh, or dystopian, uh, societies, you know, right. and, and that's where 2149 is, and, and, uh, you know, Commander Taylor's notion to cut off, um, uh, them from that, you know, not dissimilar, and certainly, uh, I'm not saying Commander Taylor's evil, but, um, certainly what the, uh, 2149ers were doing, was not much unlike what was proposed there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's much more of the comedic side. Terra Nova somewhat reflects that. And I figured, hey, for those of you out there listening or watching, <laughs> you guys actually might enjoy this movie. Uh, again, it's comedy, so it's different than mm -hmm. Terra Nova, but in the watch same it. sort of style. Watch it from the beginning. You should. You it's should. Now I know what happens in the end. Oh, well, you don't know what happens in the end. You oh. have. I, I cut it off before it fully gave away the best part yeah. of the whole movie. Um, and uh, another tie-in to Terra Nova is the fact that uh, Dr. Strangelove is pretty much as crazy as Lucas. Mm, yeah. yeah. Lucas is definitely mentally unstable. Um, so. Which, by the way, that man can't die. Right. No. <laughs> Every time you turn around. Shot twice. He's gone. Um, He's gone. This is uh this is sort of veering into predictions and all that. Just talking about Lucas because obviously he, yeah, no one finds him. But I think I think for me he's going with, to the Badlands. Would you say that's correct? Uh yeah, I would. With everybody else, right? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I agree. And I think uh I think if there is a season two, I think season two is gonna be Badlands, um, uh, commanded by. Lucas versus the uh, Terranovians yeah. with Commander Taylor. And that's really going to be, you know, the fight. I thought we'd get it, you know, in, in this finale episode, but it, I guess they were holding off for season two. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. And But I also, 
I mean, I know this is really getting into predictions, but I think that there's a portal over there, another portal oh, going so. somewhere else because they brought in that ship, right? Yeah. And it wasn't from 2149. I think it's someone's hobby. Someone's just really good at carving. <laughs> no. But it, it could still be the other portal, right? You guys were saying um, people were coming from different times, or Shannon was able to go to different years, so. No, Shannon wasn't. No. I no. thought you guys were saying that. No, no. No, they said the ship probably came from another year. Yeah, yeah. Um, real quick, talking about for this episode, um, with Lucas and all of his problems, I, I it was finally revealed that the reason why he's mad is because um, Commander Taylor had to choose between the wife and the son, and he chose the son rather than the wife, and that's why Lucas is pissed off at him. Um, how did you guys... How did you guys react to that? I mean, there's obviously some psyche in Lucas's mind. I mean, yeah, you can, I guess, understand why he would be so damaged. But, um, I mean, I, I, we didn't know all this time. That's why, you know, he was feeling a little, I don't know, lesser than. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, you guys. I mean, for yeah. me, I would have liked to see the reconciliation. You know, that's why that moment when... Uh, when Lucas fools Commander Taylor, I didn't want that to happen because, you know what, I wanted him to repent for what he did. Well, I also don't see, it, in any, like, parent situation, if they have to choose, they're going to save their kid. Like, the parent's not going to be like, all right, let the kid die. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, the parent's always going to give up their life for their child. So I don't understand, like, yeah, like, you lost your mom, it's really hard, but, like, don't think that your dad chose to save you is like the wrong decision. No. Like that's what I don't understand because if anything, that shows that he cared about his son and he thinks he didn't care about him and then it's his fault. Yeah. You know, it's weird. Well, I think, I think, uh, and let me know if you guys think this, uh, this is actually what happened, but um, the, I think Lucas feels that growing up, Commander Taylor had a lot of um, expectations for him because he was, because he had to give up on his wife there was, uh, uh, he needed um, Lucas to really be the son he had always wanted. You know, by the book, mm -hmm. exemplary, and all those things. And uh, I don't think that was the case. I don't think Commander Taylor held Lucas to an impossible standard, but I think that's what Lucas felt, and he never accomplished it. And so then that damaged him, and she, he shied away from Commander Taylor. It's kind of funny that they're both involved in the same project, though. Like... Taylor was sent there to do his thing for, you know, make a better world. But then his son, Lucas, well, I guess they all came together for the same motive. Mm -hmm. But then Lucas rebelled, right? Yeah. And started working with the bad people. But it's kind of funny, like, you would think that that maybe Lucas chose his sides before they even went to Terranova or something. I think he did. You think he did? It's just weird that they, like, even had that type of relationship to even be able to be in the same colony together in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I get you, Kendra. I gave you my... <laughs> my Fair enough. Stick, so. Any last thoughts on this season as a whole or this episode before we go into yes. commercial? Okay, go ahead. Boylan, I think he really proved himself. I, throughout the season, I thought that he was going to be the spy and he was the bad one. But... All in all, like, I think he really proved his loyalty to Taylor. Like, he called him up when he knew that all the troops left. And when they arrived back at the colony at the end of the episode, he, like, shook Taylor's hand as in, like, like, you know, we're a team. You, you did a good job. I did a good job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, thank you type of thing. And it was interesting to see that side of him. Kendra? I mean, yeah, you mentioned Boylan earlier. I... I, uh, I mean, I guess he kind of proved himself. Um, I thought uh, Josh proved himself a little bit more this time. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in taking his dad's advice and, and working with Boylan, and I thought, I thought that was Yeah, cool. that's true. Yeah. He improved. What, what I'm excited, um, you know, I think by design they made the all the characters kind of shady in the beginning. And then uh, as we sort of got, got to know them, uh, it put us at ease. And uh, the episodes kind of figure out what they were, what this whole season was about. And so I'm excited that the show is starting to get to a place where it's catching its groove. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times it, it is very, you hear showrunners say, say it a lot. It, you know, we didn't know what the season was until we got to the third season sometimes. Um, so I think 
there is a season two, I like the fact that they kind of now have hit a good pace. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else before we go into our uh, commercial and then the last DL Dino of season one? Um, well, are we going to do news and gossip then, too? We'll do news and gossip then, too. Okay, well, then... Well, then no. commercial it is. <laughs> commercial it is. All right, Jesse, take us to a commercial. Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Janice is a drama queen. This yes. is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. It's television, and they want it to be as dramatic as possible. I mean, it's Shakespearean. Like you never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy... Ducky is a villain. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband or your best friend? <laughs> the wig! The wig no, will come out. That wig. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. Well, guys, my DL Dino of the week. Um, the name is... By the way, suggestion, we should get some Jurassic Park music again like last time. That was that was just awesome. All right, Jesse, you going to cue that up? <laughs> DJ uh, Jesse Janity in the booth. On the ones and All ones. right. On the ones while we and get, While we get our uh, DL Dino, why don't you start describing it for us, and then it'll slowly build up and ramp in. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, director. It is called a Sorophagonex. It's weird. Sorrow <laughs> faggot X. <laughs> Literally, that's how it's said. I have the pronunciation right here. And that's Greek for greatest lizard eater. Awesome. So it eats lizards? Um, yes. That is one of the things. And it looks like a T-Rex? It does, and it's actually bigger than the T-Rex. It is the one dinosaur that's bigger than the T-Rex. Interesting. That's, cool? that's why I picked it. Um, so this was found in the woodlands of North America. To be exact, in Oklahoma, the fossils. Mm -hmm. So this little dino grew up in the middle of nowhere. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It was uh, during the late Jurassic period, 155 to 150 million years ago. And it's predicted to be about 40 feet long and three to four tons. It eats meat and it's, what else? It was dug up in the 1930s, which is really long ago. (laughs) You guys are making me laugh. It's the music, right? (laughs) No, you got to. You just got to go with it. You got to go with it. Anyways, it was it was found. The fossils were found in the 1930s, um, and they were fully examined in the 1990s. Um, So it's a theropod, and it's very similar to the giant species of Allosaurus. Um, it's now at the museum in Oklahoma City, and this carnivore rivaled the Tyrannosaurus Rex, like I said, in size, and it must have been feared in its Jurassic heyday, is what the website said. Excellent. Um, yeah, so it's the official state dinosaur of Oklahoma, and another additional thing I wanted to bring out was a few facts about dinos that we all should know. So if you haven't taken a class oh, in a while. Oh, extra bonus, Jesse. She's getting an A for this class. <laughs> if you haven't. After Buzz TV exclusive. That's right. If you haven't been in school in a while. Nerd alert. Then here are some facts to refresh your memory. Facts about dinos. Dinosaurs weren't the first reptiles to rule the earth. They were around in the middle to late Triassic period. The archosaurs or archosaurs were mammal-like reptiles. They were not dinosaurs. There are more dinos that have not yet been discovered. The dino kingdom is split into two main groups. No, not carnivores and herbivores. Saurisians and ornovisians, which <laughs> according to paleontologists has to do with their hips and things like that. Hips don't lie. <laughs> Hips don't lie. <laughs> Shakira That's said. Good. <laughs> um, dinos probably evolved from birds. And most dinos had small brains. 
they were not the most intelligent animals. And the flying pterosaurs were not considered dinos either. They were only reptiles. The end. Facts Dang. You Should Know, brought to you by Gabrielle Laurent. We'll make sure to have a pocket protector, pocket protector for her waiting. <laughs> Study your dino. TV exclusive. <laughs> All right, why don't we get into the news? And I'm just going to let this music play. Oh, okay. It's I was going to say, do I get some news? After Buzz TV news. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for one thing, um, since we don't have the numbers yet from this week, uh, we mm -hmm. don't know what the ratings were like, but from last week, uh, we know that it wasn't a good week for Fox's Terra Nova. Um, they slipped to a new series low with a 2.1 rating, which makes it uh, its slim chance of renewal even slimmer. Yikes. Well, <laughs> so I'm sad. sorry. No, no. Well, he, he, here's okay. why I'm going to justify that they probably will do a season two is because they, in order to, they want to re remake their money, right? And so it's going to, they're going to cut whatever loss they're going to take from the show. They're going to cut it tremendously if they do a second season. Yeah, but the, okay, so the production company, what about Fox? Fox mm -hmm. isn't making money, so they're going to be like, uh, no, uh, we're going to put a show on the air that is going to make us money. Maybe they'll move it on to another network. No, maybe? but or but again, there's such a huge uh, loss of money. It, like, the production cost of this is so high mm -hmm. that it makes more sense to do a second season versus not doing a season. Well, speaking of production costs, this two-hour season finale costs $47 million, according to Jose Molina TV on Twitter. Again, and, and that's why I think, rather than, you know, you could take that whole loss and be like, okay, we're done with this show, or they're going to be, you could just say, you know, we've already spent this money, let's do a season two, and slowly incur that money back. I don't know. There, there, I mean, there is a logic to doing that. Yeah, I get it, but I think ultimately it's the network's decision, and if the network's not making the money, they're losing more by agreeing to do a second season with low numbers. But again, the point is that they're not. I think they, they, they lose some money, but I think at this point... Because the, the, the network doesn't owe anything to the people in production in Terranova. It's not like Fox is the production crew. Fox I mean, is just he, the he, network that signed them on. Here's the true story. Literally, the, um, uh, the, the G.I. Joe movie, right? Um, I had a friend on it. Um, they, they, they shot the movie. It was uneditable, right? It basically, you, you, they put it together in the edit bay, and it did not make sense. Mm -hmm. They hired um, my friend um, to basically come in and save this movie. They said, you know what? Right now, we can't sell this movie. We've spent $60 million on it. It's unsellable. It's, we can't do anything with it. And what they said, we'll give you an extra $5 million. Do whatever you have to do to make it something. Now, when they put it out, it made $20 million. Obviously, a $40 million loss. But at the end of the day, um, it, it would have been... If he, if they hadn't done that, they would have taken a sixty million dollar loss versus a forty. Yeah, but that's still what involves in the production company. There's no network there. No, well, that's the distributors and all that too. Mm. In other news, but we'll just have to see who wins this battle. Fair enough. In the upcoming weeks, months. This, this is just kind of a fun tidbit. Um, in this year's top, uh, top selling episodes on iTunes. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> The episode called Instinct of uh, on Terra Nova was number six, just under uh, Gossip Girls, The Kids Are Not Alright. See, there you go. Again, I think you recuperate a lot of this money through DVD sales, iTunes sales, and all this. And I, so I think it makes... That's why, you, you know, you see a lot of cable shows. The typical way was do a pilot, to get picked up, blah, blah, blah. Well, um, People have become smarter now um, with cable shows. Uh, Walking Dead did this. Instead of doing just a pilot episode, they did six episodes. So that way you have a full season that if it doesn't go right, you can still package it and sell it and make some money. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I'd like to see well, the good. numbers, though, on that. I hate to end your news short, but uh, you have a caller on the line who would love to. Oh, great. Yay. All right. Let's take our caller. Caller, what is your name? Where are you calling from? Hey guys, it's uh, Adrian. I'm, I'm from uh, El Centro. Hey Jesse, what's up? Uh, I've been, I'm a, I'm an avid fan, I guess you could say. Oh, that's oh. awesome. Well, welcome. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Yeah, uh, I, I was hearing about earlier where you guys were deciding if they're gonna pick up the pick up Terra Nova for uh, a second season. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
And what's your thoughts? And uh, I think they'll probably, I mean, Fox owns FX, don't they? Yeah. So I, mean, I think they're probably going to move that to FX and probably make it, you know, work there. Like for like for example, like the Sons of Anarchy, they may they're doing really good at FX. So if it doesn't get stay on Fox, it may go to FX and do better there. You know what? I agree with that. I think that fan base too, the people that watch the FX network, I think it would do so much better on that type of network. Yeah, it would be a good home for it. Agreed. Yeah, what? And, Sorry, what? And uh, also. Uh, Speaking of dinosaurs, uh, did you guys hear about the recent rumors of Jurassic Park 4 that, that uh, Steven Spielberg is? I did. I did. I'm surprised we actually haven't brought it up in our news. I'm going to yell at my two news girls. I actually thought Wait, you we, said we that one episode. Yeah. Oh, we, we did bring it up. A we while ago. That back. In our news. So. <laughs> um, Thanks for reminding us. <laughs> are you excited to well, see it? Uh, yeah, actually I am uh, because uh, I've been, I watched the uh, last three and... Really, uh, the third one we will not talk about. <laughs> really, why don't you like it? I mean, out of curiosity, I didn't, I didn't, for me, I didn't think it was that bad. But why do you why, you feel obviously differently? I think we lost. We Did lost we the caller. It? We won't talk about no. Jurassic Park three. We refuse. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I messed that up. Well, Sorry. thanks for calling in, and try calling us back if you can before we end the show. Um, by the way, thank you. Uh, you know, I. I, I I love hearing that people, um, we obviously get a lot of comments, but um, to interact with fans is great. Yeah, it's so much better. You guys make the show more interesting, so more people need to call in. But we love, uh, so we, better. we love, uh, you guys have been tweeting with us sometimes. It's always fun to read your tweets. <laughs> and you're so. getting on it now. I'm yeah, doing more on tweeting. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've always been on Twitter, but I, I've always tweeted for AfterBuzz rather than myself, but. <laughs> Little tidbit. Phil tweeted to the wrong Gabrielle earlier. It was so funny. Gabrielle, he tweeted the wrong one. I certainly did. So if you're tweeting Gabrielle Loren, make sure there's an underscore between the two. Yes. Um, any other news and gossip? Actually, no. I was just. I mean, he took. He he stole my thunder. That caller. The <laughs> Jurassic Park no, Four. I'm kidding, caller. <laughs> um. So why don't we move straight into predictions? We already predicted. Yeah, but now we got to fully predict. You're after Buzz TV. Um, I predict Jurassic Park 4. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, that, I'm excited to see that. Um, now, in terms of this, let's assume that there is a season 2. I think for me, Lucas is the uh, main focal point, and I think in the second portal and all that, you know, we'll is in the We'll hear more maybe about Mira, the daughter. I, I think my prediction was that if there won't, if, if there isn't going to be a second season, maybe they'll make it into like a, a TV movie, maybe just to kind of tie up some loose ends or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what, you know, um, what I could definitely see. Imagine if this season, this story was just one movie. You know what I mean? Right. It would have been very. It would have worked. Yeah, I think so. Um, Gabby, I don't agree about the movie because. Unless they're going to do more than one, they're going to do a sequel. I wouldn't have liked them ending it off on a ship statue. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I, I obviously you'd have to amend it and ado adopt yes. it uh, accordingly. Um, but, I mean, uh, I guess I could agree with it because that's why I like those longer episodes. Yeah, There's more to it. Yeah. More to it. Um, and uh, for me, uh, something that we skipped over, but I like the. I think we'll get more dinosaurs in season two, if there mm -hmm. is a season two again. Which I obviously love the T Rex being loose. Right. I was say, we left that out. Oh, that was the best part, by the yeah. way. That was my favorite part when they brought the dino over. Because we the were dino waiting just, for it. <laughs> they were like, wait, what did the guy say? He's like, wait till you see this or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Get right. Like, crazy. yeah. Oh my God. And then the doors open and the yeah. Rex was just there. I love that. I thought it was so funny. It was more funny than like scary or yeah. upsetting. It was just funny. Seeing a exactly. grown man scream. Because right we didn't away. even <laughs> know. The thing is, we didn't even know that the T-Rex was in there. Right. That was the best part. Well, I guess, uh, sorry to have to say this, guys, but um, Jesse, cue our outro music because if I don't cue the music, then I'll never wrap it up. Thank happy you guys. holidays, everybody. Sorry. Yes, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Enjoy. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you, thank you girls for doing this with me. Um, and um, it's been great. Yeah. It's, we've had some ups and downs we uh, with this show in terms of we liked it. We we had some nitpicks with it. But, hey, at the end of the day, I thought we did yeah. a good job. We made it. Well, we're done with season one, guys. Yes, and if there is a season two, uh, I personally am excited to see it. Yes. 
And check out Scouted on Tuesday and Wednesday Revenge. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Revenge, I think Revenge is a good uh, crossover show for most of these guys. Yeah. Okay. Scouted. For the 1% of you guys, check it out. It's actually a good there show. There are dinosaurs in Scouted. <laughs> are there? Um, anyway, uh, Gabrielle Loren, Gabrielle underscore Loren yes, on Twitter. on Twitter. And then Gabrielle Loren, number one, from my public page on Facebook. And, oh, go ahead. KendrickCabasel.com. Yes. It's got all you need. It's got it's got your shop holiday shopping needs. It's got all of that. Let's <laughs> go there. All right. It's got the cart and everything. Amazon. Exactly. So guys, and on behalf of Kristen Carney, uh, uh, sweat the small stuff with Kristen.com. Um, it's been a great season. Thank you guys. Keep uh, tuning in to the other shows. Jesse, take us out of here. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire. You listen. Buzz, Buzz, you, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only. Do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.